Amen, amen. God bless you, family. God, welcome, welcome, welcome to the Morning Devo. And today is Friday. So today we talk about what? We talk about health and wellness or health and wealth. Whatever the case, amen. I think that Friday is a good time to reimagine yourself, to reinvent yourself, to re-identify yourself in the things of God. Amen. Before the weekend comes to try to smash all the ideas and all our dreams and try to take away the purpose that God has for us. Because the weekend opens up opportunities that normally wouldn't be opened up all week. Right. During the weekday, usually people, if you're working nine to five, if you have a, a job that you work for somebody else or you have a business, you're usually open during the weekdays. Amen. And not a lot of people are fortunate to work anytime they want. So when the weekend comes, it seems like it's kind of like a, a celebration. It kind of like takes away uh, the anxiety, the, the struggle of the week and gives you like some kind of comfort and relaxation. That's if that's you. Uh, my work schedule is a little different. Amen. I am pretty much independent. I don't work for anyone. Uh, all glory to God. And it's been that way for almost, close to six years. But when the weekend comes, it still does something to my mindset as well. It opens up other things and different times of doing things during the weekend that normally would not be there during the weekday. Church is one of them, right? On Sunday, it's part of the weekend, right? We have church services. So that opens it up. Um, During the week, it wouldn't be open normally as Sunday would open up for church and stuff like that along those lines. So we're here today. Amen. Uh, We're going to be talking about what really was really important that a lot of people uh, really don't talk about much anymore. I don't know why, but mental health. Amen. Uh, my niece, Nevaeh Galan, she has a podcast um, and she just spoke about that on her podcast as well. You can check out all the podcasts that we have at um, on the network, right? Cell Radio Network and check out the podcast on there as well. Amen. Sweet to the soul. And that's the name of her podcast. So look her up. She's on the Cell Radio Network all over the platforms that we have podcasting on. So shout out to Nevea, my niece. Amen. So that sparked up something in me that I haven't spoken about, I don't think, ever or at least for a long time. Mental health. What, what happens in here, right, will activate what will happen in your body physically emotionally, spiritually, amen. So, of course, mental health has been attacked, especially the past three years with the whole COVID pandemic and all this other stuff. Mental health has been attacked, amen. And I personally know some people that are struggling in this area, that need help, need prayer. But we all need God, amen. God bless you, Facebook users. I don't know who you are, uh, amen. There should be a link that you um, could um, show who you are. It's a restream link on the details, so listen, let's get into it because I'm trying. I'm going to try to cover some things here. I think it's very important um, to get this in our lives and our mindset to start thinking this way when it comes to our mental health. So I wrote in the comments, this will help you take every thought, every thought captive by giving all your concerns to God. I'm concerned about a lot of things. And if I keep those concerns just between me and my concerns, then I'm not allowing Christ Jesus. I'm not allowing God. Amen to do anything about it. But when I have every thought captive, I give all my concerns to God. And the secret strength you need to do what is right, even when wrong thinking, listen to this, even when wrong thinking is fighting back. How many times you get wrong thoughts in your mind? You don't have to admit to it, but um, wrong thinking comes through my head a lot um, because we are in a world that is being kind of like controlled, right, by the prince of the air, the devil, the Satan, Um, Lucifer, well, his name name is not Lucifer no more, but you know, the deceiver. He's running this world system, and since he's in the air, literally, amen, sometimes you'll be getting these thoughts that come seemingly out of nowhere, but they're coming from a place, and they're coming from a place that doesn't like you, they're coming from a place that wants to kill, steal, and destroy you. Those thoughts are not your thoughts. So you can't be too hard on yourself when you're having a great day, and all of a sudden these wrong thinking patterns slide through your mind, amen, like really fast, rapidly, but God is faster than that. Amen. And God created our imagination, which is the fastest nation in the whole universe is our imagination. The images that go through our minds and through our minds, through our heads. Amen. So with that, I want to say 
that welcome to the morning Devo, the wellness Devo Friday. We're talking about mental health. Amen. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or any prayer requests, don't hesitate to leave them right here in the live chat. Amen. So that way we could um, get into this real quick. Let me give me one second. I have to tell my daughter to lower her uh, computer. She's in school right now. Give me one second. It's a very annoying and I, I can't concentrate. I can hear it too much. Hold on. I'll be right back. Amen. You probably hear my footsteps on the podcast, but I had to tell my daughter to lower something. Yeah, that was really annoying. Amen. So let's do this. Take a minute to pray. Amen. And then we'll share this out with as many people as we can for 60 seconds, right? Um, because if we don't share this out, then, you know, somebody right now needs to hear this word. And I'm going to try to cover some scriptures. There's a lot here, but amen. Well, a healthy mindset is a healthy life. Healthy thoughts promote healthy life style, right? And a healthy mental life, amen, um, will promote all things good. God is good, amen, and he's in control of all those things that are good in any way, right, in our lives. So, Father God, I thank you for this time, this opportunity, for this wellness devo, for this morning, for this day. I pray for every single person's mindset to be renewed, trans transformed, changed, and inspired by Holy Spirit, God. I pray, Lord God, a hedge of protection over my mind as well. My mind, my family's mindset, right? From the very youngest family member to the very oldest and everyone in between over my relationship with my wife, over all relationships that I come in contact with friends and family members, and also for every single viewer and every single listener right now. I pray, Lord God, that you would speak to us and that you would engage our thoughts and that we would learn how to take our thoughts and put them under the obedience of Christ Jesus. I thank you, Lord, that you have renewed our mind according to Romans chapter 12 and that we have an opportunity to get a new mindset set right now to think things through and whatever we don't understand Lord God we could bring those thoughts those ideas those concepts those concepts those religions that we don't understand and bring it to you for clarity because your thoughts are way above our thoughts so I speak life concerning all things living come against any demonic distraction in the name of Jesus over our lives over our minds what we say what we do I pray Lord God that you would give health to our body strength to our bone and a clear mindset a blameless mindset, amen, that you renew and restore everything that needs to be renewed and restored in the powerful, mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, amen and amen. Let's take 60 seconds. When we come back, uh, I'm going to first go on Romans 8, chapter 5, no, Romans chapter 8, verses 5 and 6. We'll really start there, amen, as we go into this mental health on the morning Devo, wellness Devo. I'll be right back. Amen, amen. We're back. Romans chapter 8, verses 5 and 6. Let's go there real quick. Um, the ESV says, For those who live according to the flesh, set their minds on the things of the flesh. Makes sense, right? You're thinking about this. You're thinking about that. You're thinking about this. You're thinking about that. Those things will control your mind. But those who live according to the Spirit, but for those who live according to the Spirit, set their minds on things of the Spirit. For to set the mind on the flesh is death. But to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. Mental health starts with who or what you're doing. 
where you're setting your mind to. You're setting your mind to the flesh. Whatever the flesh wants to do is totally opposite of what the spirit wants to do in your life. So if you focus on the flesh, you will get the results of the flesh. If you focus on the spirit of God, you will get the results of the spirit. And the results of the spirit in your mind is life and peace. Who doesn't want that? Sign me up. I want life and peace. Sign me up. And I just lost my place. So let's try to get back here um, to where we were. Amen. Let's go back here. Oops. And forgive me. Let me get back to where I was. Thank God for where I was. Amen. So whatever we focus on. Bible says, whatever you join to, you will become like. In the same way, in our thought process, whatever we think about the most, we will want to do the most, or we want to be like the most. So if you think about the Lord and His Word the most, amen, you will become more like the Word in the Lord. Sounds new age, amen, but I want to get back to where I was so I could show you what I'm, what I'm trying to say in a better way, amen. But it seems like, um, yeah. See if I can get back to it. Here we go. So that was Romans 8, 5, and 6. How about this one? Philippians. And let me um let me do this to make sure this stays where it needs to stay. Let me try to see if I can open up another one. Nope, I can't. So all right. All right. Bear with me. Amen. I'm trying to get my thoughts together. So first of all, sometimes when you look at the world around you, this is first of all, after we know that whatever we think about the most, we want to do the most or become like. Sometimes when we look around the world, you feel overwhelmed by what? Anxiety, fear, right? You don't have the peace that you used to have before. A lot more things are happening. I was listening to old school classic freestyle music last night when I was doing my workout. And I was thinking about how it was in the 80s and 90s compared to how it is now in the 2020s, right? And I'm like, a lot of things have changed for sure. Uh, For instance, music was more laid back back then, uh, more about uplifting vocals and all this other stuff. Now it's different. I mean, you can still find uh, music that's inspiring, that will edify you, that will bring you up, that will help you with your mental health. Um, But a lot more than often, it's not like that. Amen? So I'm trying to figure out, you know, how people used to say, you know, those were the good old days. I used to say that too, but I don't believe that anymore. Today is the good day. Amen? And it doesn't have to be 20, 30 years ago that you have to say, man, I wish I was back there. Because of what we think and how we Allow God to work in our thought process. Today could be the best day of your life, according to the scriptures. Amen? According to how God wants us to think and how God wants us to move in his victory and his power and his word. Amen? God bless you, Sister Maggie. So it's good to see you on the Wellness Devo. Today's Friday. So we're talking about mental health today. Amen? I'm so afraid to press this next button because I think this is going to take me away from where I'm at. And Oh, no. That's good. Okay, I found out something about my iPad. Let's go to Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Philippians 4, 8 says, Finally, brothers, whatever is true, this is the way that God helps us to think. Think things clearly. Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, Think about these things. You ever woke up with all these thoughts of negativity? You ever have a a relationship with a person who always speaks negative words? That's because they're allowing their mind to consume these negativities. These consume these negative thoughts and negative mindsets. And they're probably hanging around with people of like minds. You know, um, if you put a lot of positive people together... That energy around those positive people, amen, you will feel good about that. Even just by walking by that energetic, you know, group. 
But if a group, you're hanging around a group or if you're in a group that's always negative, you will feel that type of vibe as well. Amen. And it could take your great day to like a day like, man, I hate myself type of thing. Right. Because there's energy in that. That's why God saw the people trying to build their towers and a ladder to heaven pretty much. Right. The Babylonians. And then he said, wait, if they're like mine. They could do whatever they want. And their intentions were not good. So God broke that down. Amen. And he'll continue to break groups like that down because he knows that's not his plan for you. That's not his plan for me. That's not his plan for this world. Believe it or not, the way the world is going crazy, that's not God's original plan. So therefore, I came to the conclusion years ago that God is not running this world system. To me, it's obvious. To others, they were like, no, God is sovereign. Yes, he is sovereign, in control of all things, good and evil. He controls evil. The Bible actually says that in some instances, God will send evil spirits because he controls all spirits. Amen. But he's not using that to bring life to my life. He's not using an evil spirit to bring life. He's not using something that's so destructive to bring me up. That was used for the enemy. To break him down. Amen. So just so that way you don't think that God uses evil spirits or tempts us um, to think otherwise. Second Corinthians 10 5 says we destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against me. No. Against you. No. Raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought. Here it is. Captive. To obey Christ. So my thought life tries to get a little crazy. I don't know about you, but my thought life sometimes starts to get out of control. I'm like, wait a minute. Uh, What am I looking at too much? What am I listening too much to think this way? And also the prince of the air, the devil, um, he has so much things going on right now in the atmosphere. There's a war right now going off of people's souls as we speak. So a lot of things, a lot of energy flowing around. But when the thoughts get crazy, uh, I'm not going to argue with the devil. I'm not going to argue with the enemy. I'm just going to go to God and ask Jesus to keep those thoughts captive and under his obedience. Amen. Because there's no thought pattern. People who suffer with mental health when it comes to suicidal thoughts and everything else like that. There's a lot of things going on. And it is a real thing. People say, oh, that's just the imagination. Well, that's a horrible imagination if that's all it is, which will cause you to jump off a roof or jump in front of a train or jump in front of a car. That's nothing to joke around with. Could it be that those voices that these people are hearing are demonic voices, demonic forces? God, Jesus, spoke about heaven and hell, kingdom of God, kingdom of hell, kingdom of darkness, kingdom of light. He would talk about these things. He would talk about what was going on in the spirit realm. He would speak kingdom. He would lay hands on people and cast out demons. Where did they come from? How did they get there? Were they spoken to someone? Can a demon transfer? And all? Th- these are some topics that people just brush through. Said, so, no, that's all in the movies. And meanwhile, people right now are struggling in their mind. Amen. It's no joke. But a healthy mindset promotes a healthy and wealth, uh, wealthy lifestyle. Amen. And to get the pure health, to get the pure wealth, to get the pure prosperity. Amen. We have a God of heaven and earth that allows us to experience all those things. So how could you take control, right, of your mindset, of your thoughts? A lot of Christians struggle with this issue. And a lot of people in general struggle with this issue. Proverbs 4.23 says, above all else, Guard your heart, right? For it is the wellspring of life. The heart includes what? The mind. All that proceeds from it. Someone said that every sin we commit, we commit twice. Once in our thoughts and again when we act upon those thoughts. That's how powerful our mental health is. Our our bad mental health will cause us to do bad things. A healthy mental health will cause us to do good things. But it's still a struggle, it's still a fight. I don't think the enemy will ever be on our side. I know the enemy will never be on our side. He would try to make what's right and he would call it wrong. He would try to take what's wrong and make it right. But last time I checked, right, the equation of what's right is always right. The equation of what's wrong is always wrong. 
So right will always be right. Wrong will always be wrong. Wrong will never be right. And right will never be wrong. So we have absolutes. And we have the word of God on it. So our mental health has a lot to do with what God says over our life. Can you imagine listening to what God says more than who you're listening to over your life? I'd rather have the God of heaven and earth speak into my life than the God of this world speak into my life. For so long, I was listening to the God of this world before Jesus saved me. And I was biting on the rotten apple, you know, just to use that as an illustration. And it seemed right. It seemed like whatever I was hearing, whatever I was hearing from was right. And then so God came into my life, changed my life and rescued me and renewed my mind. My mental health started getting better. Amen. Because my mental health was crazy bad. Amen. Juan class. God bless you. Good morning. God bless you. Asking for prayers for the lost grandma. He came my mom. Please. Thank you. Amen. So let's stop right now. Let's pray for brother Juan. That's tough. Um, Lost my grandma. It's tough. I remember when I lost my grandmother. I've lost both my grandmothers on both sides. My my dad's mom and my mother's mom. And it's it's tough. So, Father, we pray for um, Brother Wang and the class family. I pray, Lord God, peace, comfort. I pray, Lord God, during this time of loss uh, that you would show up in the situation. You show up in their hearts and minds and give them a sense of joy of the life that was lived by this grandma. I pray, Lord God, that you would bring joyful thinking to this situation although it's sad and we mourn and it's a time to mourn there's a time for laughter there's a time for all of that but i pray lord god whatever one needs in his life right now that you will fill that whatever he needs in his life i pray peace i pray lord god the power and the comfort of your holy angels to be with him and his family during this time and everything that needs to be handled will be handled according to your purpose and plan And I thank you, Lord God, for his grandma's life. Thank you for giving her life. Thank you for giving her long life to be called the grandma. And I thank you for the power of prayer. I pray by faith, knowing that you could be the comforter, be the hope, the joy, the peace for Brother Juan during this time. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you, Brother Juan, for being honest and sharing that. It's not easy. Um, That's why I stopped right away because it reminded me of when I lost my grandmothers. It's not easy, man. Losing a loved one is not easy. And listen, the pain that we feel when someone dies, we feel it because it's not supposed to be. It wasn't never supposed to be that way. No one was supposed to die. God's original plan for us was to live forever. But Genesis chapter 3, you can read it for yourself. Um, There was a a problem. And because of that problem in Genesis chapter 3, sin, sickness, disease, death entered into um, the world. It's just the way it is. So bless you, Brother Juan. Amen. Um, so we commit sin twice, some people say, once in our thoughts and again when we act upon those thoughts. So it's easier to rid our lives of sin if we attack it first. If we attack sin from nature according to how it thinks, amen, we have the remedy. We're going to not think about the sin. We're not going to think about um those things as much as we think about things that are heavenly, things that are righteous, things that are right, things that are full of joy, hope, mercy, grace, the Lord Jesus, reading his word. I believe in, a lot of people don't believe this, but I believe in replacement theology. I believe that we could replace what's bad with what's good. I believe that we could, we could replace bad words with good words, with God's word. A lot of people don't believe that. Amen. I know in my personality, the more I consume, whatever I consume the most will come out of my mouth. And the Bible backs that up. Whatever you put into your heart, right? Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks the word of God says. So if you catch me cursing somebody out, that that came from somewhere. I was feeding on something. I was filling my heart with bad words, curse words. But if you hear me saying things of peace, things of of the word of God, amen, then the evidence shows that I was consuming the word and I was speaking the word out of my mouth because of it. Amen. You are very welcome, Brother Juan. Amen. God bless you and your family, man. It's a difference between being tempted by thought, right, into the mind and sinning. If you dwell on the thoughts too long or long enough, it will cause you to physically. So uh, a thought is actually spiritual, right? 
if you can't see your thoughts, I don't think you can see your thoughts. I mean, your thoughts could paint images in your brain, in your mind. But there goes the thought. I can't catch it. I saw a thought, but I can't touch it, feel it. But you know it's there. You know, that's another way to explain God to those who don't believe. But the thoughts, if we dwell on those thoughts, those thoughts actually could compel us, could convince us, manipulate us to sin. So dwelling upon an evil thought and continually staying there will cause you to sin. But there's a difference between being tempted by a thought entering into the mind and sinning. So it's important to understand that when a thought enters our mind, we examine it based upon God's word, not based upon this world system. And then we can make a decision. Should we continue down that path or reject that path of thinking? Amen. Replace it with another thought. That's what I believe. I, I believe in replacement theology. I believe that we could replace a bad thought with a good thought. I believe we could take a blessing. Amen. If somebody curses us, we replace that with a blessing. Or if somebody comes with negativity, we replace that with positivity. I believe that with my heart. My personality shows that. Amen. It works in my life. Amen. And I know it sounds weird, but I do that. Uh, even with money. Right now, um, the funds weren't where it's supposed to be, but I knew it was coming. I just forgot that it was coming, and I had a pl- way to replace those finances. And I com- all this week, I completely forgot until the calendar hit yesterday. And it's, I was like, oh, wow, that's right. I was supposed to do something different this week uh, to replace, I believe in replacement theology, replace those things that were missing. Just the way I am. Hopefully that'll help you out if you if you think about it. Change your path of your thoughts, even if it's hard to change it. Here are some biblical suggestions for taking control of our thoughts and getting our mental health corrected. Be in God's word. That's number one. Sounds corny. Sounds relevant to a lot of people. Some people say, ah, the word of God. The word of God has power. Listen, the word of God, when you read it, it's the only book you ever read in your whole life that every time you pick up the word of God, the author of the word is with you every single time. No other book could do that. Amen? Be in God's word so that when a sinful thought enters our mind, aka a temptation, we will be able to recognize it for what it is and know what course to take, what actions to take against it. Jesus in the wilderness, Matthew 4. For an example, right? The temptation of Jesus. Then Jesus was led, Matthew 4, 1 to 25. I'm only to read a couple of it so I could show you the idea of what God is saying. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. That was right after um, the Holy Spirit. Um, The baptism. Amen. Right after that, he comes out of the water and he's into the temptation in the wilderness. Verse number 2. And after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. The Bible's so honest. The Bible's so relevant. Verse 3. And the tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, questioning who he is already, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But Jesus answered, It is written, because this is a thought that the enemy was trying to put in Jesus' head. See that? It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil, verse 5, took him to the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, if you are the son of God, the enemy will test your identity. Who are you anyway? Who are you anyway? Oh, you're not nobody. That's the way the enemy does. That's how he's been doing that since the beginning. If you are the son of God, throw yourself down for it is written. Now he's trying to quote a scripture to the scripture himself. He's trying to quote a word to the living word. Can you imagine that? He will command his angels concerning you and on their hands they will bear you up lest you strike your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, and this is Jesus speaking to the the devil, not us speaking to the devil. I don't think we'll have a chance, amen, to try to outsmart the devil or to out. He's a liar. He's a father of lies. But God Almighty, through the Son Almighty, right, knows how to handle the devil. Jesus said to him, again, it is written, you should not put the word, the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to the very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms 
of the world and their glory. And he said to him, all these I will give you. Um, he has a, a point there because he controls and manipulates the world system. But Jesus knew that already. The enemy will always try to make you doubt your identity in Christ. Yes, Sister Mary saw for sure. He will always try to. That's his job. That's his will. That's his purpose. And he said to him, all these I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, be gone, Satan. That's it. For it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only shall you serve. So do you see it? Do you see how Jesus himself, the Lord himself, used the word, amen, to rethink things, to get out of that temptation? And we could do the very same thing. Amen. There's a lot more, but I'm out of time, unfortunately. Amen. Uh, Let me see if I can get this one more thing. I knew when I touched that button, it was going to knock me out from where I was. And I did it again. Amen. So let's see if I could get back to where I was. My apologies. Yeah. Yeah, I can't get back to where I was. I... I lost where I was, but let's see. Yeah, I lost where I was. My apologies. We're going to have to do a part two of this. There's a lot of good sauce in here. Amen. So mental health is very important. That was my point of this whole thing. Amen. And I'm going to have to do a series on this because there's a lot more here. And I got too excited, started pressing too many buttons. I lost my notes, but I'm out of here anyway. I hope you have a great weekend. I hope and pray that the peace of God will be upon your life. And whatever thoughts that are hindering you from doing something good, amen, you will go to Christ and keep those thoughts obedient under him, under his reign and his rule, amen. If you need me during the weekend, instant um, DM me, live chat me, amen, get me on the website, however you want. Let's stay connected because we need each other. Pray for me and my family. I'll continue to pray for you and your family. So God bless you. God keep you. And remember always that God is good. Peace.